uh, so we continue our uh, study of solid geometry uh, where is the ppt oops yeah so we will uh, we have already studied uh, we have understood what uh, direction cosines of a line means uh, now i will proceed further from there i have also mentioned what is uh, direction ratio of a line but just to for the sake of completion i will try to recall the definition once more mm. so let's start from here a uh, bit of this was done in the last lecture so i'll go very quickly in these parts uh, lmn is direction cosines of a line then i'll say uh, then i'll say uh, yeah. oh, it's being recorded yes it's being recorded uh, so lmn b direction cosines of a line uh, then i know uh, any triplet abc which is uh, proportional to the directional direction cosines that the triplet lmn is called a direction ratio is called direction ratio of that line and proportional means just take any real number and multiply direction cosines by that that's that's all uh, the proportional means so we have seen these kind of things we had an example in which direction cosines of a line was 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 0 if you multiply this by root 2 i will get 1 1 0 which is the direction ratio so i am multiplying by the constant root 2 similarly you can multiply by various numbers and see all these things which are you see in the last line 2 to 0 minus 5 minus 5 0 root 2 root 2 0 they are all direction ratios of the same line after all they are all multiples of this triplet by some number except 0 of course mm, we had seen this similarly example 8 also we had seen there are some line whose direction cosines was 0 root 3 by 2 1 by 2 multiplied by 2 you will get 0 root 3 1 which is the direction which is a direction ratio of this line similarly you can multiply it by yet another copy of root 3 you will get 0 3 root 3 etc etc like this we have seen direction ratios are essentially multiples of uh, direction cosines uh, we had also i had also stated this it's easy to see that if abc is direction ratio of some line then uh, direction cosine is very easy to find you just basically divide by root of a square plus b square plus c square it could be plus or minus that doesn't matter uh, i'd also stated this direction ratios of the line joining two points if you are given two points i can make a line passing through that point now i want to find what is the direction ratio of that line and it's given by this very easy formula straightforward x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 z2 minus z1 this is the direction ratio from this, I can find direction cosine, of course. So I'll see in problems how this is useful. Uh, this is one very important result. I think this is where last lecture, there are some problem with recording. So from here onwards, I'll uh, go on my usual pace. So L1, M1, N1, and L2, M2, N2 are two direction are two lines. Means L1, M1, N1, and L2, M2, N2 are direction cosines of two lines and then the angle between them if i call them call it theta that is given by this formula cos theta is equal to l1 l2 plus m1 m2 plus n1 n2 which means theta is l1 uh, cos inverse of l1 l2 plus m1 m2 plus n1 n2 uh, so let's try some problems that will i hope it will make it clearer show that the direction cosines of the line equally inclined to the coordinate axes are these so what is being asked here is I have a line which is equally inclined to all the coordinate axes. So there is x axis, y axis, z axis. Equally inclined means the angle between uh, the excuse me angle between uh, the line and x axis, angle between the line and y axis angle between the line and z axis they are all equal that means alpha beta gamma are all equal in this problem so since if alpha beta gamma are equal cos alpha cos beta cos gamma are also equal so since the line is equally inclined to the coordinate axis cos alpha is co same as cos beta same as cos beta, no, beta same as cos gamma so <clears throat> that means l m n are all equal but i know uh, l m n just excuse me. Mm, 
uh, I know L square plus M square plus N square is one, which means since L and N are all equal, three L square equal to one, which means L is equal to one by plus or minus one by root three, which means M and N are all one by plus or minus one by root three, which means I found the direction cosine of a line, which is equally, uh, uh, which makes equal angle with each of the coordinate axis, it equally inclined to the each of the coordinate axis. I hope this is clear. Basically, I'm trying to show you the power of L, M, L square plus M square plus N square equal to one. If you know some relationship between them, uh, I mean, this is one more relationship between them. In this problem, there is a relationship given amongst them is that they are equal. I have used that. Find the angle between the lines whose direction ratios are one, one, one and minus one, one, one. So now here, direction ratios of two lines are given. I want to find the angle between them. For the for, uh, I, I, I know a formula for angle between two uh, lines is, I can find it if I know direction cosines. If direction cosines of two lines are given, then this is the formula to find angle between those two lines. But here in this problem, I have been given direction ratios between two lines. So I have to convert it to direction cosines. That is standard procedure. That also I told you the formula. So if start with this line with this is the direction cosine and I, uh, direction ratio. So I convert it to direction cosine. Direction ratio 1, 1, 1. So direction cosine of that line, same line is 1 by root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square, etc, etc. Which is 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3. This is the direction cosine of a line whose direction ratio is this. Similarly, I want to find direction cosine of line whose direction ratio is minus 1, 1, 1. So here it is, same procedure, just divide by root of this square plus this square plus this square. Uh, again, it is minus 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3. Now, I know direction cosine of this line and this line. Direction, that's what I have done just now. I have been given direction ratio, I have found direction cosines. Once I know direction cosines, I know the formula. The angle between those two lines, if it is theta, then cos theta is L1, L2 plus M1, M2 plus N1, N2. Just substitute the values which I know. L1 is 1 by root 3, L2 is minus 1 by root 3, etc, etc. I get this answer. I mean, you can verify this numerically. I hope I have done it correctly. So cos theta is 1 by 3. So theta is cos inverse of 1 by 3. Uh, now there is one more type of problem which says, so basically I understand what we did. Given direction ratios of two lines, I can find angle between them by finding the direction cosines of those two angle, uh, lines and using those formula. So this is another type of problem. Show that the lines whose direction ratios are 2, 3, 4 and 1 minus 2, 1 are at right angles. Uh, so we want to show the, I mean, Direction ratios of two lines are given. Essentially, let us try to find the angle between them. How do I do? Again, I find direction cosines. So direction cosine of the first line, whose direction ratio is 2, 3, 4, is, you can see it on your screen. And uh, direction cosine of a line whose direction ratio is 1 minus 2, 1 is also similarly I can find. Just basically divide by root of n square plus n square plus n square. Uh, so once I know direction cosines of both of them, use the same formula. I know cos theta is, if the angle is theta, cos theta is this. Substitute the values and uh, I hope I have done the numerically it's correct. It, it seems to be correct because answer cos theta is 0, and uh, which means theta is pi by 2. That means angle between those two lines which have given direction ratios is 90 degrees. Uh, note here that denominator did not play any role here. It means root 29 into root 6, root 29 into root 6, root 29 into root 6. This is what you will get. They don't play any role. Basically, numerator must be 0 for perpendicularity only if the lines are perpendicular. So, this is the shortcut whenever you want to show somebody is some two people, two lines with given direction ratios are 90 degrees, you can directly see. For example, here 2, 3, 4 and 1 minus 2, 1. They are the two direction ratios of two lines, direction ratios of two lines. If you want to show they are perpendicular, just multiply them directly. 2 into 1 plus 3 into minus 2 plus 4 into 1. If it is 0, then they are 
90 degrees because they normally really you don't have to find direction cosines that's all uh, but this is only true only if it is 90 degrees otherwise it, it doesn't work or multiples of 90 degrees you can look up various uh, uh, cases so now there is another type of problem uh, it says show that the points these three points form a right angled isosceles triangle how do I show this? How, see, understand the problem. It says there are three points, minus four, nine, six, plot it in your x, y, z axis in the space, three-dimensional space. Plot this point also, minus one, six, six. Plot this point also, zero, seven, ten. The question is to prove that these form a right-angled isosceles triangle. And also ask to find direction cosines of AB. That's easy to do. Direction cosine of AB is basically you just find direction ratio of AB. I know it is x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, z2 minus z1, and then find direction cosine. But before that, let's try to see this. I wanted to see that it forms a right angle isosceles triangle. So let us compute distances AB, BC, and AC. Uh, what happens? Yeah, AB is, I know that by distance formula, I know how to find distance between A and B. So that comes to be 3 root 2, usual formula, x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square plus z2 minus z1 whole square, whole thing under root sign. Similarly, bc, um, c is, uh, this will stand for x2, y2, z2, and this will be x1, y1, z1. And I evaluate uh, this expression, I get 3 root 2. Immediately I can say, okay, definitely this is isosceles because two of the sides are equal. Now, similarly, try to find the third one, ac. Uh, where C becomes X2, Y2, Z2 and A becomes X1, Y1, Y1, uh, X1, Y1, Z1. So uh, you find AC using, using that uh, distance formula, you'll get whatever you see on the screen, 6. Now you see that AB square plus BC square equal to AC square because this is 18. AC, AB square is 3 into root 2 whole square which is 9 into 2, 18. Similarly, AB square is also 18, uh, BC square also is 18, AC square is 36, AC, um, 18 plus 18 is 36. So it's a right angle triangle. I have already shown it's isosceles. Yeah, I can show that it is a right angle also. Oh, I don't seem to have completed this problem. Please do this. I have not written here, I have not presented here. Find direction cosines of AB. I'm sure you can do it. I'll just tell orally. So first find direction ratio of line AB. How do I do that? Minus 1, minus, minus 4. 6, minus 9. 6, minus 0. I get a triplet. Basically, it will be uh, 3, 3, uh, 3, comma minus 3, comma 0. That's the direction ratio. Find direction cosine of line whose direction ratio is 3, minus 3, 0. I can do that by dividing by root of minus 3 square plus 3 square. So that is the direction cosine of AB. I have not presented it here, but I told you orally now. But anyway, we have done that kind of problem. Given two points, what is the direction cosine of the line passing through both of them? Now, here is another problem. Show that PQ, R, PQ and RS are uh, parallel, where PQ, RS are four points given. So, okay, now four points are given. If I join two of them and join two other two of them, though both the lines are parallel. That's what they asked us to show. How do I show somebody is parallel? How do I show two lines are parallel? If their directions, cosines or direction ratios are same, then they are parallel. I mean, that I told you before. If two lines are parallel, their direction cosines are same. So if direction ratios, of course, direction ratios need not be equal. I'm sorry, I told direction ratios equal. Direction ratios need not be equal, but direction ratios need to be proportional. Uh, because you know direction cosine direction ratios are something proportional to direction cosines so uh, two uh, direction ratios are proportional then their direction cosines are same so uh, then the lines are parallel so basically we have to find direction ratio of pq and rs let us do that uh, check if that, that's what i told you you check that find direction ratios of pq and rs and check if they are proportional so direction ratio of PQ is, I know how to find it. Um, P, uh, point P is given, point Q is given. So you take Q minus P. So that means 1 minus 2, minus 2 minus 3, minus minus 3, 
0 minus 4. That is the uh, direction ratio of PQ. When you evaluate that, you get minus 1, 1, 4. Similarly, direction ratio of RS. How do I get that? 3 minus 5 and 6 minus 4 and minus 6 minus 2. Uh, I'll get this. 3 minus 5, 6 minus 4, minus 6 minus 2. So basically minus 2, 2, minus 8. I observe that these two are proportional. I if I multiply the first one by 2, I'll get the second one. So clearly there are two direction ratios which are proportional. Uh, hence uh, those lines are parallel. PQ and RS are parallel. So basically to show two lines are parallel, if I, if I know two points on each of those lines, all I need to do is find direction ratios and see that they are proportional. Thank you. It's very easy. Find the angle. So now let's try to, these were all whatever till now problems I did were very straightforward. Direct application of formula which we have enunciated right at the beginning of the lecture. Now let us do slightly more complicated involved problems. Just a couple of them. Find the angle between any two diagonals of a cube. So now I have a cube. I will put the cube in the first octant. Means in the xyz axis. In the xyz uh, three dimensional space with x axis, y axis, z axis. In such a way that my cube is in the first octet. That means the cube is completely in the positive, positive, positive. X axis positive, Y axis positive, Z axis positive. And origin is a vertex of the, uh, one of the vertices of the cube. That is how I place it. Uh, and I'll say length of each side of the cube B, let it be A in some number. So I'm just doing A. Typically it's like this. So this is what means this is the first octant. You see this. Uh, cube in the first octant. See, this is the x-axis, this is y-axis, this is z-axis. And my cube is in the first octant. It means where it's completely positive. Everybody, every point in this is uh, non-negative. And uh, coordinates of every point in the cube is non-negative. And length is A. So why do I need this? Of course, it's a cube. So all lengths are equal. All lengths of each side are equal. By doing this, I can find coordinates of each of these points, each of these vertices. For example, A, point A here is at a distance A on X axis from O and Y coordinate and Z coordinate are zero clearly. So it is coordinates is A comma zero comma zero. Then similarly for B, it is A, A, zero. For C, it is zero, A, zero. For D, it is 0, 0, A. For E, it is A, 0, A. For G, it is 0, A, A. For F, it is A, A, A. So all these eight vertices, I can write the coordinates. So I return it here written them here. Origin is this coordinate, A is this coordinate, B, etc, etc, up to G. Now, the thing is, I can write angle, I mean, I can write direction cosine of any of the diagonals. That's the main thing. See, remember, recall what the problem is. I want to find angle between any two diagonals of a cube. So, basically, uh, by symmetry, you can take any of the two diagonals. In this problem, I will take, uh, let me check which is the one which I am taking. OF and BD. Okay, so here is a diagonal OF, join O and F, and then another one is BD. I'll join them. So those two diagonals will intersect at the actually center of the cube. I'm trying to find that angle. Now, because I know the coordinates of each of these points, I can find direction ratio of OF because I know coordinates of O and coordinates of F. And from that, I'll find direction cosines of that line. And similarly, direction cosines of BD, because I know B and D. So then I can find direction cosines of BD. Then I know the angle between them. That's what I'm doing here. So direction ratio of OF is AAA, because O is anyway 0, 0, 0. Direction, similarly, direction ratio of BD is D minus B. So that means 0 minus A minus A, 0 minus A minus A. A minus 0, A. So minus A, A, A is the direction ratio of BD. 
Now, I want to find the angle between OF and BD. So what I'll do is I'll try to find direction cosine of OF. That's very easy to do. If I know direction ratio to be A, 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 then direction cosine of OF is A, A, A divided by root of A square plus A square plus A square, which is 3A square under root sign. It's A root 3. A, A gets cancelled. I get 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3. Similarly, direction cosine of BD also, I get this. Same expression. You can see it on the screen. Uh, so then I know cos theta. That is, if theta is angle between them, cos theta is... Uh, product sum of the products of these direction cosines which comes to be 1 by 3 so theta is cos 1 by 3 so it's a very straightforward problem uh, basically I converted I wanted to find to see the picture I wanted to find angle between OF and BD for that I needed co uh, direction cosines of OF and BD that's easy to find because points I know O I know F I know so I can find the direction ratio of OF. Similarly, I can find direction ratio of BD and from that I find direction of cosines and form the angle. That's precisely what I did through this problem. Please go through this carefully. Now, there is another problem. A line makes angles alpha, beta, gamma, delta with the diagonals of a cube. Prove that cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma plus cos square delta is 4 by 3. It's a bad notation but they use this kind of notations in the exam so I am using it. Like for us, alpha, beta, gamma are fixed angles between the line and x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. But here, alpha, beta, gamma are something else. They are angles. So let me explain what they are. It takes some line passing through origin, of course. Uh, it, no, it, sorry, it doesn't have to pass through origin. Some line and think of a cube. And cube has four diagonals. Uh, so let's see the picture here. This is the picture. So I have a cube and there are four diagonals I know, OF, uh, AG, uh, BD and CE. These are the four diagonals. So maybe should I draw it or not? We can see it. OF, if I draw it, it will become too uh, no, clustered, uh, too dirty. So just see it in your mind's eye. OF is one diagonal, EC is another diagonal. Um, O F, just one minute. Uh, o F is one diagonal. A G is one diagonal. B D is one diagonal. C E is one diagonal. So there are four diagonals. I don't want to draw them. A, I'll say once more. O F is one diagonal. A G is another diagonal. B D is another diagonal. C E is another diagonal. These are the four diagonals. Now I have some line, I don't know which line, it's some line. That line makes angle alpha, beta, gamma, delta with each of these diagonals. So I, I, I can't draw them. So you have to see, there is some, you have to see these four diagonals, draw a line, some other line, and that line makes angle alpha with somebody OF or something like that. That's what we are doing. So as usual, we write the coordinates of O, A, B, C, O, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Diagonals, these are the diagonals. And direction ratios of O, F, D, A, G. All the five, four diagonals, I find it like the way I did previously. Because all I have to do is subtract. If I want di direction ratio of B, D, I'll subtract D minus B, I'll take and write it here. Uh, D minus B. And I'll get this. So now these are the direction ratios. Now find direction cosines of the same lines. Just divide by root of sum of the squares, n square plus n square plus n square. All four I have found. Now what it says is this is the crucial step. Let Lm and be the direction cosines of some line which makes angle alpha, beta, gamma, delta with the diagonals OF, AG, BD, and EC respectively. That means that line Lmn. It makes an angle, means line with direction cosine element, makes an angle alpha with OF. Now I know direction cosine of OF. I know direction cosine of that line, it is called element. So angle between them, I know how to find it. That is, they are saying it is alpha. So I will use this property. So cos alpha is this. This is the angle between L, M, N and 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3. 
So cos alpha is L into 1 by root 3 plus M into 1 by root 3 plus N into 1 by root 3. Which I have simplified, I will get 1 by root 3 L plus M plus N. Similarly, cos beta is the angle between uh, the second diagonal. What was the second diagonal? AG, whose direction cosine I know. Uh, and LMN. So I have computed angle between them to be cos beta. Similarly, cos gamma and cos delta are and gamma and delta are angles between that line element and appropriate direction cosines minus 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 3 root 3 1 by root 3 like that so when i substitute when i evaluate this when i simplify this i'll get cos alpha is this cos beta is this cos delta is this cos gamma is this now i'll find out cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma plus cos square delta so cos square alpha you can see cos alpha if cos alpha is this cos square alpha is 1 by 3 into l plus m plus n whole square that's what i have written cos square beta is similarly 1 by 3 i have taken out common from all four of them i will get minus l plus m plus n whole square minus l minus m minus n whole plus m plus n whole square plus minus l plus m minus n whole square so one has to evaluate this there is no a shortcut for this L, L plus M plus N whole square, you must know the formula. It is L square plus M square plus N square plus 2 LM plus 2 MN plus 2 L N L. So you take cyclically, you have to take this. So I return that out here if you don't know. L plus M plus N whole square is L square plus M square plus N square plus 2 into LM plus 2 into MN plus 2 into nl so that is what we get here similarly you evaluate this minus l plus m plus n whole square similarly this this i written down all these expressions here you can pause here and see carefully make sure that i have not made a mistake and then you evaluate that you'll get this and this is what is the right hand side so this is what i wanted to prove cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma plus cos square delta is 4 by 3 i have shown that Mm. There is another problem. Edges of a rectangular parallelopiped are A, B, C. Show that the angles between the diagonals are these. Uh, this I don't think I'll solve it completely. I'll leave it to you as a homework. It's very similar to what we have done for the cube. Here, instead of cube, it has a, it's a rectangular pa parallelopiped. That means basically it's a, um, a cuboid whose uh, length, breadth and uh, height, all three are here A, B and C. So now you can find the coordinates of each of the eight vertices because I know the length is one is, first one is A, 0, 0 and then I'll get A, B, 0 and then the third one I'll get 0, B, 0 and similarly everything on Z axis if you have some C, you'll get four more like how you did for the Q and then find the uh, direction ratio and hence the direction cosines of the diagonals and find the angle between them you will find very symmetric things and they will all turn out to be this i leave it as a homework but it's very similar to the previous problem which we solved i think this much will suffice for uh, this course for time being uh, i'll stop here and uh, we will continue again later uh, with more uh, subject thank you